How you guys doing? Welcome to Indoor Hydroponics. I am John, your Indoor Hydroponic Test Dummy, and welcome inside my grill room. Today is January 12, 2015, and today I want to start a little bit of a field trial here. And uh, by field trial, I mean I'm going to do a non-scientific trial inside my grow room against two tomato seedlings from a product I picked up at the hydroponic store. And whenever I go to the hydroponic store, I'm so overwhelmed with all of the products out there, whether it be nutrient, um, amendments, gadgets, gizmos, that type of stuff, man. I mean, it's just there's a lot of stuff in there, and I think some of it is snake oil. I think a lot of it is primarily the same stuff just put out by different companies. So I'm, I'm kind of leery on it. If you find a good product, just run with it, right? But this one I wanted to test out because it's it's pretty neat and it's called Bush Doctor Kanga Roots, okay? And it's a root drench. It's not necessarily a nutrient or a fertilizer, though it does have some in it. By that I mean a minute amount. And I'll give you the percentages. You've got 0.8% nitrogen, 0.1% uh, phosphorus, and 0.03% uh, potash or potassium. So there's not much going on in there in terms of feed what is in this bottle or what's claimed to be in this bottle is lots of different forms of mycorrhiza and biology so let's come in a little bit closer and take a peek at what I'm going to be doing here and I'm going to tell you how I'm going to test it what the control is going to be and whatnot and how long the test is going to be for okay guys again this is bush doctor kanga roots root drench the cell on this stuff is that it has uh, biology and fungus in a bottle okay it's got all kinds of forms of mycorrhiza it's got lots of different types of uh, bacteria in this and what it is supposed to do is stimulate the primary and secondary roots of the seedling and or plant that you are applying this stuff to and what it does is is if you have a seedling and or a plant with a larger finer root mass then it has the ability to take up water and nutrients at a greater level than a plant that is not fed with it and so that's why I wanted to test this okay so again this is primarily to generate primary and secondary rooting of the seedling or the plant so what am I going to test this against I'm going to test it against two tomato seedlings okay these are about two weeks old both started out in peat pellets I'm going to carefully remove the outer casing of this so that I will not damage the roots of of what's shooting through these things right there's a couple of little tiny roots shooting through there so I'm gonna very carefully remove that I'm going to transplant them into cups using happy frog potting media okay so they're both gonna get happy frog potting media and there is nutrition in this so it should carry the plan out for the duration of this test which will be four weeks now I'm gonna have two I'm gonna have two transfers here one is going to be a control. All it's going to be fed is straight H2O for the entire two weeks. The second one is going to be fed a weekly dose of the Kinga Roots um, root drench, okay? So we're going to leave these under the lights for 12 hours a day on, 12 hours off, and we're going to monitor the progress on a weekly okay, basis. Okay, guys, I have these seedlings uh, transplanted. By the way, these tomatoes are Oregon Spring, which is a determinate, fast-growing uh, early variety. So I wanted something that would grow somewhat quickly throughout a four-week trial. Um, I have my kangaroos mixed up here and it's at a measured rate of 10 milliliters per gallon. I am using in both containers here um, water that's been dechlorinated. So this is, uh, this is obviously the control and this is the test. So let's give this puppy a feed. And we'll see if this makes any kind of difference at all. And the reason I am conducting this little experiment here is because if this does work, then I am going to use this on all my spring starts for the outdoor grow because I am a proponent of um, a healthy seedling generates a really healthy plant. Okay, so I want this. Uh, if this does work, this would be a perfect time to do this in here before I start my seedlings for the spring grow. Now I'm going to add just the plain water to the control side. 
And really guys, that is it. I'm just going to leave these under the lights, come back from week to week, check it out, and at the end of the trial, we will perform the autopsy. Today is January 12th, 2015. We'll come back and take a peek at the progress on January 19th, 2015. Thanks, guys. One week down, we got some really good growth on both plants, kangaroots and the H2O and honestly guys after the first week uh, it's pretty close but I'm gonna have to say ah, the H2O is a bigger healthier plant from visual observation so again one week in let's give them their weekly dose okay this one again kangaroots this one is H2O January 26, 2015, we are officially at the end of week two, and what you are looking at here is the um, tomato seedling that has only been fed with plain water, and this is a fantastic seedling. Unfortunately, I am getting bad vibes with Mr. Kangaroots, okay, and I'll show you that in a second. In addition, before we get to that, I just want to say that we may have to cut this particular experiment short um, because check this out I'm getting some good root action coming out of the bottom of the cup here and remember I want to examine not only the top growth but what's going on with the roots okay in fact boy I got a root coming wow yeah okay so this is only gonna be a three week experiment because I want to then take these out of the cups and examine the roots and see if we have a significant difference in the root structure between something that's just been fed plain H2O. Again, no fertilization on this particular puppy, just using that uh, Happy Frog Grow Media. And this is a fantastic seedling. Now let's take a look and see the difference. Here is Mr. Kangaroos, okay? And not particularly pleased with the visual observation of the top growth here. In fact, it doesn't even look like the same tomato plant. I mean, we've got much rounder leaves compared to the uh, H2O and even some um, cupping going on here. So this is kind of a sign of over fertilization, which is weird because there's technically not much fertilizer in it, okay? Um, so I don't know exactly what is happening here with the kangaroo roots, all right? So maybe it's developing a thicker root structure and it's inhibiting the top growth here. But really, this is a stark contrast with what's going on with the H2O. Now I do have some root action, very minimal. Well, actually I don't. Yeah, I do. I have one little tiny root poking out of the bottom there. But beyond that, um, I'm thinking maybe it's putting its energy into um, root growth, which may be slowing down the seedling production. So again, it, from visual observation, this is really different, okay? And so I'm very curious to see what's going on in here because remember, if there is a stark difference in the root contrast, if this is a much more concentrated, dense root mass, then maybe this stuff actually works. It is doing something to the plant because these two plants, <laughs> which are of the same variety, look nothing alike. And that is really interesting. So. At the end of week three, we will end this experiment. We will again look at the top growth, and then we will examine the root structure. Okay, guys? We are at the end of week three, and we have some fantastic seedlings going now. In fact, I added two more to the group for the test. Okay, so these are approximately two weeks behind. They've had their first week dosed of um, the Kinga Roots and regular H2O and I'm noticing the same growing patterns. This is weird. Here's the one with the H2O and it is a strong, healthy, normal growing seedling. Looks like a beautiful, uh, atypical tomato plant, okay? Here is the one that's been fed the kangaroo roots, and again it is continuing to develop this rounded leaf structure, a little bit of curling going down. Um, in terms of the thickness of the stalks, they're about even, although this one just looks naturally more healthy, okay? 
So I don't know what is going on with these particular uh, varieties. Again, I am looking at the exact same structure on these two particular plants. And these are two plants called Beef Maestro. They're a bush beefsteak type tomato. Noticing the exact same characteristics. So I don't know what's going on. This one's almost a little bit more leggier. Um, I am noticing a one little root coming out of the bottom of the kanga roots which is interesting because I would think that the root structure would be much more greater in here given what the product is telling us that it's going to to do however if you look at this particular one look at this look at the roots coming out of the bottom of this one this is just from regular H2O man and I mean there is such a stark difference between these two plants that right now, um, <laughs> I gotta tell you, uh, Kangaroo Roots is, is really losing the battle on this particular experiment. So I will carry it out to the fourth week. We will then dump these babies out and examine the roots and see what's going on in here. But I gotta tell you guys, plain H2O and a good potting media is winning the battle of this experiment. All right, guys, we've hit the four-week mark on this particular test, and it is time to take a look at the roots. But, of course, if you looked at the, just the top growth and went with that, by far and away, just a good potting soil, and H2O is the winner. I mean, this looks like a perfect, perfect tomato seedling. I mean, look at this thing. It's just perfect. And uh, if you even take a look at this, if I can get in close enough here, it's already starting to bud. See that? I'm going to have some flowers kicking on here real shortly with this thing. So this is just a good uh, looking tomato plant. And then, of course, we go over here and we have this stressed looking plant. All right. So following manufacturer's recommendations on the kangaroo roots and got some cupping of the leaves, rounded leaf structure, weird. Okay. Certainly not as tall as uh, the one just with uh, plain water. In addition, the the stem, the width of the stem is certainly not as wide as this one. So if I'm just looking at it from above the soil, um, this baby is the winner. And I am not impressed at all with the kangaroo roots at this point. So let's uh, rinse off the roots, take a look at them. autopsy time guys let's take a look at these roots and believe me when I say this I was going to get in full surgeon's garb the scrubs the mask the glasses the little hat thing but I'm just too tired it would have been an epic video but gosh I got to get up early for work tomorrow regardless this one right here is the one fed just with the plain old water and a decent potting soil and I mean the root structure is so long it extends off the tray it's got that those secondary roots, those little, sh um, those shorter spindly type roots. Those are your secondary roots. These are your primary roots right here. And if I look over here, it's just a whole lot less root mass. I mean, I have some primary roots and a lot of secondary roots. But I tell you what, man, I hate to say this, but this kangaroo thing, based on this particular experiment, in my opinion, is a bust because everything about the H2O plant is just so much better top growth roots are much more lush and um i'm gonna have to call this one a bust guys so um i will uh end up planting the this one out on the left see if i didn't kill it i'm gonna put it in a deep water culture let's come back in a few days see if i didn't kill this thing and we'll wrap this video up